We were denied for free and reduced lunch because we exceeded the poverty level. Thea Gleason is one of millions in New Jersey who, according to the federal poverty level, makes too much money to qualify for support programs, like free lunch for her two school-age children, even though it's a struggle just to pay her bills every month. And then when you look at the poverty level, it's like $22,000, I don't even know how you could afford to buy your kid one pair of shoes a year if that was what you were trying to sustain a family on. The federal poverty level is a criteria developed in the 60s that Peter Chen says is completely antiquated in how it calculates what a family needs just to get by. It's based on a budget that's uh, mostly food based uh, and we know that today food is not the largest expense for most families. It's housing, it's child care, it's transportation, health care, and the federal poverty level does not adjust well for state to state differences. So a state like New Jersey with relatively high housing costs, relatively high transportation costs is not captured in the existing federal poverty level. That level for a family of three is about $20,600, meaning any family that earns more than that does not qualify for federal support programs. But in New Jersey, the average cost for housing, even low income housing, is more than 17,000 a year, about 80% of their income, leaving a family of three with a little more than $3,000 left to cover all other expenses, including food and child care. There's a divergence between um, what the federal government considers as poverty and uh, what poverty means in New Jersey. Legal Services of New Jersey has calculated what it calls the true poverty level, meaning the minimum a family needs to survive in this state. And that number comes in at just above $70,000. In a new report, it found that millions in the state are left out of critical support services because, like Gleason, they earn, quote, too much money. The federal poverty measure says that you have about 800,000 people living in poverty in New Jersey, but in reality, it's, you know, close to 3 million actually experiencing deprivation in the state. For Gleason, an English teacher in Ocean County who works several other jobs throughout the year just to pay the family's bills, some months it's just not enough, and she's left to make hard choices. We knew we were going to be short, so we held back on utilities or, like I said, a credit card payment, which always winds up biting you in the butt because then you have a late fee on top of your now you have a second payment to make. She's the only earner in her home. Her husband is a stay-at-home dad. Many parents face the same choice, finding it cheaper not to work than to pay hundreds to thousands a month in child care costs, especially for multiple kids. Recognizing that families are struggling even in these higher income ranges is really helpful. The federal government already makes adjustments for Alaska and Hawaii in living costs. Um, and it's not rocket science to adjust for living costs otherwise. And so I think the one size fits all federal poverty level is no longer and has never been appropriate. Prasad says this report doesn't account for any of the losses experienced during COVID and was done when the unemployment rate was around 3.2 percent. Early in the pandemic, it spiked to more than 16 percent and is now hovering around seven and a half percent. We already saw how even with a good strong economy, poverty was still high. So now with what happened because of COVID, one can only imagine how poverty will look like in a year or two. She says millions more could be unaccounted for in their struggle just to get by. For NJ Spotlight News, I'm Joanna Gagas.